The NASA's Advanced Exploration Systems Office is working on a lot of projects to develop the tools that those future explorers will need to uh, support their explorations. Right now, here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, work is underway on logistics reduction and repurposing, or finding ways to take things on these trips that are used for more than one purpose. This morning, NASA Public Affairs Officer Brandy Dean is talking with those folks about their progress. Thanks, Pat. We're here today in uh, the Deep Space Habitat mock-up with Sarah Scholl, who is the Deputy Project Manager for the Logistics Reduction and Repurposing um, Group with, at, with the Advanced Exploration Project that you mentioned. And um, she's got a couple of projects she's going to show us, uh, starting out with some cargo bags. Um, tell us, I guess, let's start back up a little bit, though, and say what is Logistics Reduction and Repurposing? Um, so logistics reduction repurposing is a AES project, as you mentioned, the Advanced Exploration System. Um, we like to say it's kind of NASA's reduce, reuse, recycle project, <laughs> the green mentality. Um, and so what we're looking at is items that you fly for logistical needs and trash as well. What can you do with it after it serves their primary purpose? So is there a secondary purpose? You, you know, you paid a lot of money and spent a lot of effort to fly this stuff to space, and what can you use it for as a secondary purpose? Right, and I know that's one thing that um, if you've watched NASA TV very often at all, you see the um, the astronauts unloading things that have come up on progress and then repacking it with trash and it's just I know kind of an ongoing problem of what to do with all the all the trash right. that right. that so the space station at. makes. Yeah, we're looking at what we can do to help with that for the next, you know, deep space missions. Right, and it's complicated when you go further, right? Yes. Yeah, it gets even more complicated. You we don't envision having quite as many resupply missions, so your capability to both bring supplies up and take supplies, take trash away. Mm -hmm will be limited. Okay. Well, so I think you've got uh, one of the projects that you've been working on this year here to show mm -hmm. us. Um, one of the cargo bags? Yeah. So what this is, um, on station they use what are called cargo transfer bags, CTBs. You've probably seen them in the video and photos. They're white, actually, on station. or white Nomex. Um, same dimensions. This is the same dimensions as a single one. So what we've done is look at this and say, you know, we envision for a crew of four on a year mission, you may need 150 approximately of these bags just to carry all the supplies. So and what can you... be full of clothes or food right, or clothes, food, equipment. Even. Equipment, yeah, anything. And they actually do come in various sizes. This is the most common size. Okay. So we looked at what could you, how could you redesign this bag such that you could have a secondary purpose. Mm -hmm. So this is our um, MCTB modified or multi-purpose actually cargo transfer bag. And I'll show you, this is it in its bag configuration. And then what it can do yeah, yeah, if you hold that, is it actually unfolds into a uh, rectangle of fabric. So we designed it so that it makes a, you know, a perfect rectangle, and then you can repurpose this rectangle. Right, and I guess the shape is important. You, yeah. Usually when you unfold a box, it doesn't make a rectangle. Right, nice. when you, if you look at just, we, when we brainstormed how to unfold it, we came up with a lot of more like T-shapes or cross shape, and that is awkward to try to right. <laughs> repurpose. So we thought, okay, how can we make it? And working with our soft goods lab here at JSC, we came up with this concept. Okay. And so this unfolds into this, and then what, what do you do with it once it is a rectangle? Um, so we actually, as a team, brainstormed use cases for it, and we came up with about 50 use cases. Um, some were very obvious, and those are some of the ones we demonstrated here uh -huh. in the Deep Space Hab. Um, things like partitions. You can actually see behind us there's two of these bags. You're looking actually into the hygiene um, module on the Deep Space Habitat. And we've had people living here for several days at a time um, over a course of different tests over the past few years. And uh, behind us is basically the restroom and mm -hmm. you want a little privacy in there. So yeah, I think so. <laughs> basically made some curtains. Yeah. So what we did is we gave the crew the bags in the bag configuration mm -hmm. that Brandy has. The full of things probably? Mm -hmm. Packed with, you know, toilet paper and hand soap and stuff and said, you know, you need to unpack it on your first day and then unfold them and they were given procedures and then um, join a couple together and make this partition. So you can see behind us there's actually two, they're zipped end to end. So the bags have zippers along the edge as well as some snaps so you can join them you know short end to short end or long end to long end and make mm -hmm. a chain of these. Okay. And so that's what they were able to use and they use them as their privacy partitions during the the deep space have testing and we got we asked the crew some feedback and we got good feedback uh -huh. we liked it so, so that was a successful test then mm -hmm. very successful what are some of the other um, uses y'all came up with uh they ranged um quite wildly so we had some you know pretty 
innovative ones, you, you could, in desperation, use this as clothing, probably. <laughs> Not sure we want to baseline that concept. But um, some of the more practical ones, sleeping bags, you could, you could probably join several of these and make a sleeping bag and then just swap out maybe the liner like we currently do on station. Um, and I guess if nothing else, I mean, if you're able to unfold it and make it flat, mm -hmm. if you've got 150 of them, just that much is probably a, a good thing rather right. than having to stack them, which takes up a lot more right. room. Yeah, they're squishable like that, but definitely flat. Like when we store them in our lab, we store them flat because mm -hmm. it takes up a lot less space. And you could, I mean, you could even just use them for towels, rags, stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. At least it's a secondary use. Okay. Not. Well, what are, what's kind of the next step for your project then? Um, so now we're looking at, so we've got the crew feedback, so we'll look to see if there's any you know, modifications we need to make to the bag from that feedback. Um, we're also hoping that we eventually get to fly this to station as a, as a test. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of you know, asking around and looking for a compelling use case on station. We've identified a few potential uh, use cases where the crew has said, oh, we really could use a partition here or not. So we are looking more into that. Okay. So hopefully. So more to come on that then. Right. right. Yep. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Sarah, and uh, we're going to be back in a few minutes to talk about another of the projects that she's been working on to uh, uh, melt down some trash and make that usable as well. So we'll be back in just a bit, but for now, back to Pat in the Mission Control Center. Thanks. NASA Public Affairs Officer Brandy Dean with uh, Sarah Schul. And uh, as they said, they'll be back in uh, a few minutes. We'll look at some of the other projects that those folks are uh, currently developing to how to make the most of the materials that we'll be taking on exploration missions of the future. There is uh, other work underway elsewhere here at the Johnson Space Center and at other NASA centers around the country. Uh, planning and engineering work, uh, preparing for future missions that will go beyond where the International Space Station orbits. Here at uh, JSC, the Advanced Exploration Systems folks are working on ways to get the most out of the different supplies that would launch on one of those future missions. NASA Public Affairs Officer Brandy Dean is talking with them this morning about that effort. Thanks, Pat. We're back here again in the Deep Space Habitat mock-up at Johnson Space Center talking with Sarah Schull from the Logistics Reduction and Repurposing Group. Uh, kind of a mouthful, but it basically means taking what you have and making something more useful out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we talked last time about the cargo bags, and this time she has a different project to show us. Uh, tell us what that's called again. Um, so this is another aspect of the logistics project, and it's called the Heat Melt Compactor. So it's a, a project actually led by NASA Ames um, in conjunction with our team here at Johnson Space Center. And they're looking at, so what, you generate all this trash in space, then you know, what can you do with it to, re, to save volume, um, compact it down, kind of like a terrestrial heat compa or, um, trash compactor. Uh, you, the crew could load their trash in, and then it, it compresses it down. It also heats it up, and it'll make these bricks. So these are... Um, tiles that were made in the, the Gen 1 unit out at NASA Ames. Uh, this one has kind of office trash in it. Procedures, I guess, and mm -hmm. tape and gauze. Tape. Yep, gauze. Um, there is some plastic material in it. That's kind of what holds the tile together and keeps it from springing back okay. like a terrestrial compactor might do. Um, it also, it, so it heats the trash up hot enough that it does sterilize it. So if you have food residue in here, it'll stop the microbial growth, uh, stop the odors. So this actually this tile um, is just, like I said, kind of office trash. This one is actually shuttle trash. So we took some trash that we were able to get from STS-133, um, sent it out to Ames, and they compacted it down for us. So you can Actual space trash. Actual space <laughs> trash, li labeled as critical space item. <laughs> um, it does do a 95% reduction in volume. So if nothing else, you buy back that volume. So, so how big? You know, how big, I guess, would the trash bag be to make that? Um, so this, again, would be a 95% reduction. So if you kind of multiply this by 20, okay. that's how big it's going to be. So if you can picture this stacked up, you would maybe, you know, like a printer paper size box okay. full okay. of trash. Um, so then we're also, as part of Logistics to Living, which we talked about earlier, looking at what can you do with these tiles? So in addition to just reclaiming the volume, could you repurpose these tiles in some manner? Um, because there's a... 20-30% plastic content in the trash generated in space average. Um, there is some radiation protection capability of these tiles. Okay. So you may be able to get some additional radiation shielding uh, for free. So there's a few different reasons then. So you said it first of all gets rid of the germs. Mm -hmm. um, the heat kills the germs. Second, 
this is much easier to store than a, a big box of trash would be. Absolutely. And then hopefully you can not only, you know, get those good purposes out of it, but also reuse it for something else. So. Right. Radiation. Yep. Radiation is something we're, we're definitely concerned about and, and trying to figure out. So yeah, that. that's a major concern for going into deep space. Solutions for us. So. Yeah, so we're developing a second generation of the heat melt compactor, and the tiles are actually going to be square with, um, just for the reason that that's easier to repurpose. Mm -hmm. if, you know, if you've got a layer, tiles layering round, you have to have a lot of overlap right. to cover, whereas square, you can kind of put them end to end and okay. get a nice coverage. Okay, so um, the heat compactor how how big is that is that something um the gen one unit is probably about the size of this glove box if it were turned you know on its side okay. um, for the gen two we're making it smaller because we know that volume is very you know limited in right. space in the deep space hab so it's going to be um two express rack locker size the size of two express rack lockers which is roughly probably half the size of this glove okay box. so we're constraining it to be that small we want to make sure that it's not taking up too much volume itself. Are there other things you could use the tiles for besides the radiation protection, or is that something you're looking at? Um, we've brainstormed and we've talked a little bit about, you know, you could um, use them to build dividers or um, additional partitions. The leading candidate is really additional radiation okay. protection. And using the MCTVs that we talked about earlier, if uh, folks are watching. Uh -huh. um, the cargo bags. The cargo bags, yeah. We've developed a schema that you could deploy the, the tiles using those bags. So you know you could line your crew quarters um, with a bag that's covered in tiles. Okay. And the tiles aren't real pretty to look at, so you probably want <laughs> the bag covering and that would be the side the crew would see. Agreed, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, and I guess that's, that's two of, I think you told me four projects yes. that you're working on. Do you want to, real quick, just give us a quick over, overview sure. of the other two? Yeah, so the other two tasks that fall under logistics reduction and repurposing, um, one is advanced clothing, so it's actually looking at how do we reduce the volume of clothing we need to, to fly for the crew mm -hmm. um, by extending the life wear of the clothing before it gets too, too smelly or, <laughs> or um, you know, too much microbial growth. So we're looking at uh, fabrics, to rest, you know, fabrics we use here on Earth for long duration clothing, mm -hmm. um, some antimicrobial coatings. So, so the idea is... kill the germs? Mm -hmm. Okay. The idea is to, you know, roughly double the wear time of the clothing, so you'd have to fly half the amount of clothing, cut what, down on what, that value. What is the wear time that we have now? Um, it varies by item. I don't actually have all of them memorized, but um, <laughs> okay. I would say, you know, a pair of exercise shorts, you may wear them for a week. Okay. And so we would, if that's the actual number, we'd be looking at two weeks, say. Okay. Um, same thing, you know, shirts and pants, they all have different mm -hmm. different numbers. Um, the fourth task is the trash to supply gas. So that is another um, method of looking at what we can do with the trash that's generated. And that actually looks at, can you take the trash that's generated and turn it into a useful gas, like methane? So if you have a lander as part of your deep space architecture, mm -hmm. um, some folks are probably familiar with Morpheus, that uses methane, um, could we generate the methane the lander needs from the trash? Okay. And that actually is run our team members from Kennedy Space Center on right. that portion of the project. Well, lots of interesting projects going yeah. on. Thank you again so much for talking with us. Uh, this again was Sarah Scholl, the Deputy Project Manager for the Logistics Reduction and Repurposing Group of the Advanced Exploration Systems Program. So we'll go back now to Mission Control Center and Pat. Thanks so much. Thank you, Brandy. NASA Public Affairs Officer Brandy Dean with some an interesting look at uh, some of the work that's being done uh, here at the Johnson Space Center by the Logistics Reduction and Repurposing Project, uh, all with an eye toward the uh, space missions of the future.